Welcome to church, everybody. Journey family, how are you guys doing today? Uh, no, nah, that was kind of weak. Welcome to church, everybody. Journey family, how are y'all doing today? It is so good to be here with you. And can we make some noise for our J-Fam who is joining us online? We are so glad you're here. And we always got to celebrate our Hocast and family who's joining us this morning. Let's make some noise for them as well. Well, happy Labor Day, everybody. So glad to see you here on a holiday weekend, and hopefully you got a chance to flip a burger or two or a hot dog or a steak, if you will, and if you must, had a salad or some squash or something, and hopefully you had a chance to get some rest. Well, I have to honor first and foremost our pastor, our lead pastor, Pastor Mark Johnston, such an amazing leader. And um, by the way, my name is Mark as well. And I, they let me uh, tinkle on the ivories a little bit every now and again. And um, I don't want to get you guys confused, especially if you're a first time visitor. My name is Mark, our pastor's name is Mark. Um, we do have a lot of similarities, like our name. Um, but if you ever want to know the difference, uh, how to tell the fastest who we, who we are between each other, always look for the hair. That's a dead giveaway and you will never be confused. But Pastor, I know you're at a home resting. I know you're joining us online. And sir, we cannot wait to see you back in the house. We've been praying for fresh fire for you, for rest, for fresh anointing, for fresh perspective. And we can't wait to see what God is gonna do through you when you come back. And Susie, Maddie and Connor, we love you. Can't wait to see you guys. And can we give it up for our lead team? Such tremendous leaders, man. They've been holding my hand this, through this whole process to get me up here. And I thank you, just so you know. And um, there are some people you probably do not see that is working really hard right now. And that is our online JT members who are hosting everybody right there online. Can we give it up for them? We appreciate you for hosting and engaging our, our people online. And... Um, we just finished a series called Clean last week, and if you missed any of that, I, I really implore you to go back to our, our, uh, our YouTube page and catch up on anything you missed. It was such a tremendous series, and next week we're going to start a new series called Home Improvement, which is about pursuing a new picture of our family. Sometimes, if your family's like mine, you need a fresh perspective. Come on, somebody. So you don't want to miss that. But as for this weekend, we are going to talk about moving forward. And let me start with a question. Has any of you ever just felt stuck? Let me see your hands. Online, let me see your hands. Oh, Keston, let me see your hands. Have you ever felt stuck? We're gonna dive in, but to calm my nerves, I, I need to pray real quick. Would y'all pray with me? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to, uh, to hear your word. God, speak through me. Open our hearts, open our ears. Let us hear what you're trying to tell us today. And God, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And, and God, please don't let me embarrass you today. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> so let's dive in. So my wife and I, um, we have a, a, a almost four-year-old, I've actually turned four-year-olds and um, four years old next month. And uh, she's just been the highlight of our life. We love her dearly. Her name is Augie. And for her past birthday, we bought her one of those electric cars, you know, the ones that the battery in it, and they just push the pedal and it go. So we figured that'd be something good that she can, you know, drive around the yard or in the neighborhood. And, and so we got it for her, and she, and she saw the gift, and she was so excited, and she jumped in. And right there in the living room in front of all of our friends and family, she hits the gas and crashes right into the present table. So we knew then, okay, she does not understand the concept of steering and stopping at all. So we have to work on that. So we took her outside and some of the family was trying to help her out with that, trying to get, figure, figure that out and she wasn't really getting it. But fortunately, it comes with a remote control. So that way we can kind of control where she's going, keep her out of danger, things like that. So my daughter's pretty smart. So she realized very quickly, oh, I don't have to work this hard. You have a remote. So I'm going to give you guys what you need and kind of pretend I'm going to do something for a few minutes and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to sit here and play with the radio that comes with the car and let y'all do all the work. So my wife and I are like a couple weeks ago, we're like, this is just not working. 
Um, she's just not, she's just not going to do it. So we decided to go buy her a bike with some training wheels, you know, something she can kind of grow up into. And um, it also served us two purposes. We have a track that we like to walk around our, um, our, in a park near our house, and it's about a mile long, and usually she'll walk it with us with no problem, but we want to get our reps up, so we want to do like maybe two or three miles to kind of lose some of the uh, Labor Day weight. And um, so we, we decided to buy her the bike, and she gets on it. We take her out in the parking lot, and she's trying to figure everything out. And my wife is sitting here trying to give her instructions on how to use the pedals and how to um, actually steer. And you see the look of determination on her face, like, I'm going to figure this thing out. And she would actually push the pedal down, and she would go forward for a few minutes, but it stopped. So the look on her face you see is, his bike isn't moving anymore. So she gets frustrated and she's, mommy, daddy, it's broken, I'm stuck. What she didn't know was, baby, you had to keep pedaling. See, what happened is she got used to somebody doing all the work for her. And she didn't realize new bike, new rules. So there's something that you have to do. You have to now put some effort into something that you weren't expecting at the moment. It's something new. You got to put some effort into trying that new thing out. This reminds me of the person in the Bible named Moses, which ironically, I taught about Moses the last time I was up here. Uh, Moses had an unconventional upbringing. He wasn't raised by his family. He's from Israel. He's part of the Hebrew family. And um, through circumstances, he was actually raised by Egyptian royalty. So he grew up like in the, in the kingdom and stuff like that and in the palace and and he was always an outsider, but he was part of the royal family. So as time went on, the Hebrews actually became slaves of Egypt. So imagine the awkwardness. You're Hebrew, and you're not a slave. You live in the palace, and all your people are slaves. Well, as he got older, he actually witnessed one of the slave masters abusing one of the Hebrew slaves. And he got very angry and made a horrible decision. He ended up murdering the guy. So he escapes, um, escapes uh, Egypt and he runs out into the desert with plans to never, ever come back. However, God had other plans. He, he met Moses there in the desert and said, Moses, I have a job for you to do. I want you to go back to Egypt and free the slaves who are stuck there. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad God still uses me when I made some bad choices. Anybody in the house feel that way? Anybody in Hokesson feel that way? Anybody online feel that way? You made some tough decisions that probably wasn't the best one, but God says, you know what? I still love you. I still got you. There's still something for you to do. Come on, let's go. And so he actually does what God tells him to do. He goes back to Egypt and he goes to Pharaoh, who is the leader of Egypt, and, and a lot of things transpire, because you're not just going to walk up to a king and say, yeah, all them slaves you have working for you, um, we need you to let them go. Of course, Pharaoh's like, no. And when I tell you things got crazy, it got nuts. In fact, I, I really do encourage you, during your slot and spot of that time and place you set aside to spend time with God and read your Bible, the book of Exodus is such a great read. It's, there's a lot of great nuggets in there. You get to read the whole story of what to uh, what took place. Because things that, that happened during that time was really crazy. It was, it was things like plagues. It was like locusts eating crops and, and frogs and darkness for like days at a time. And, and livestock was getting sick and dying and crazy weather patterns, all because Pharaoh wouldn't say yes. And then there was even death. And so Pharaoh finally had enough. He's like, yo, I don't know what's going on with you and your God and, and, and why it is so important for me to let these people go, but we, y'all got to get out of here. This is like a whole pandemic happening right now, tied into a state of emergency, all wrapped into one on steroids, times 10. So Pharaoh lets him go, and Moses leads the people out of Egypt, and they're in the desert, and the way God actually has them going, he's directing their path away from like danger and enemies and things like that. And they find themselves in front of this big sea. So you have this sea in front of you. You have Egypt 
behind you. So of course, Pharaoh had his internet trolls like tracking every moment they make and they're trolling them and they say, they look like they're stuck, Pharaoh. They're not going anywhere. There's a seat in front of them. And Moses is like, you know what? I had a change of heart. They were some good workers. Can you bring them back here? And um, he had his best military go after them. So imagine you are sitting there, a sea right in front of you, Egypt behind you, and now you see the best of the best military charging at you. The Hebrew people freaked out. They're like, Moses, why did you bring us here to die? We were better off in Israel as slaves. Isn't it crazy? When God brings you out of something and you're in new territory, it's unfamiliar, and you find yourself more comfortable back in the bondage you took you out of. Crazy, right? Have you ever taken a step of faith to find another roadblock? You finally get unstuck and now you're stuck again. You were finally free from something and temptation comes again. You finally made every effort to fix the relationship and now there's tension again. Moses being the good leader that he is, he calms everybody down. Guys, calm down, it's okay. God is gonna deliver us, he's been doing it for so long, calm down. He's always protected, and protected us and provided for us. But Moses shows us, instead of freaking out sometimes, maybe we should just go ahead and take that thing to God first, before the freak out. But apparently Moses must have had a conversation with God and uh, about everything that's going on. So he was kind of like internally freaking out. You know how we're calm on the outside, but inside we're like, ah! We just can't let nobody see that part. And this is how God responds to Moses in Exodus 14, 15, and 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Hmm. Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. That's a crazy response, isn't it? I know I read it, I'm like, Moses must have been thinking like, why am I calling on you? (laughs) Cause you're God maybe, I don't know. Uh, But God's response makes you wonder if Moses already knew what he was supposed to do. God said, get moving. Use the staff that you've been using to do all the miracles that was happening, all the plagues, the frogs, the locusts. You've been doing this already. Do you know what to do? Pick up the staff and do it again. Isn't it funny how sometimes we pray about things we already know the answers to? It's crazy, right? I do it often. Sometimes we actually know what our next step should be. We know that we need to seek help to beat the addiction. We know we need to put more effort into the marriage or into the relationship with the loved one. And maybe you found yourself like the Israelites kind of camping out by the sea in a temporary location a little too long. You know, I'm gonna speak to myself, it was supposed to be a two day break from the diet or the gym and now it's been a few months pray for me. (laughs) Y'all laugh a little bit too hard on that one. (laughs) You know that person that you're kind of dating, you know they're horrible for you, but you're just lonely right now, and I I just need some companionship. just, Just for a little bit, just for a little bit. Or what about that need you see to lead a J group? You know God's kind of put it in your heart, and 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 gave you a burden for it, but we start using excuses like, I feel like my home is too small, or I don't like, I'm not comfortable praying out loud in front of people, or I'm not spiritual enough. Can I challenge everybody today? Can I challenge you online? Hocasson, can I challenge you this morning? It's time to move. 
It was around 2018, 2019 that um, my wife and I have been praying about a lot of things, and, and really they were about what our next steps are going to be, and like asking the questions like, what should I do next in my career? I'm bored where I'm at. There's more I know you're calling me to. What should I be doing in ministry? What should I be doing with our family? What should I be doing with our finances? Anybody ever felt that way? And you know, it's a weird feeling when you have that feeling like there's more because inside you're like, have that burning feeling like there's more to me. There's more to this. I should be doing more. I should be accomplishing more. There's more things I feel like God's yelling in my ear that I should be pursuing. But it wasn't until the end of 2019, right before New Year's, I was praying, it's like, God, is a new year coming? And, and I kind of don't want to stay in the same place that I'm in because I'm feeling this tug to do more. I don't know whether we should move and go somewhere else. Are we in the right place, the right location, the right vocation? God, what is it? I feel stuck. And God said to me, and I know that feels weird that God speaks, but he does. And God put upon my heart, you're not stuck. You just stopped moving. You see, when my wife and I moved to Delaware about seven years ago this year, I, I was heavily involved in, in ministry work and church work. I, I was a worship pastor. I was leading people. I was developing singers and worship leaders and musicians. I was helping to call first-time visitors. I was helping put together a sermon series. I was, I was helping to, to, to lead our church. And then I moved here and I stopped. I kinda, what's the new term called? I kinda quietly quit. And so it was funny when friends would call me up that know me and say, hey man, you've been kinda quiet. Your Facebook is kinda quiet. What you been doing? You moved to Delaware and kinda fell off the face of the earth. And, by this point, we had joined the journey and made it home. We felt God called us here, and, and eventually I, I joined the J group, and, and uh, our J team, and uh, we started off in production and was having fun there, and, but I became a wallflower. You know how we do. We sit up against the wall, and we just say, I'm going to take things a little slow. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm observing to see how things are working around here and to see where I fit in, and and I don't want to get too involved because I might get disappointed. Or I don't want to repeat some of the same things that frustrated me before. Perhaps you can relate to that today. You know, if for you it might be that strained relationship with that family member or that teacher or that coworker. Perhaps you're tired of just always being the bigger person. Uh, Amen, somebody. Or maybe it's that habit that you know you need to let go of, but you kind of figured already, I'm probably going to trip and do it again, so why bother? Maybe it's that extra effort you need to put into that relationship or into that marriage, but it's just so much effort. And if I'm honest with you, for me, being a wallflower, it's comfortable. It's easy. It's a defense mechanism. But the whole time that I felt stuck, I always knew what to do next. But man, that wall is so comfortable sometimes. And the funny thing about being in a temporary place too long, you ever notice that it brings about permanent results? Maybe it's time to take a step and add some discipline to some areas in your life or put some guardrails up so those bad habits or those things that tempt you can have some barriers so you don't fall off. Maybe your next step is to leave the toxic friendship. Put some new people around you, go in the same direction you are. Maybe it's time to seek counseling for that broken relationship. Somebody come speak into your marriage and help bring some life back into that. Maybe it's time for you to join a J team. Maybe it's time to actually lead a group. You see, just like Moses, you have people all around you to help you take a next step. And each step that I took, <laughs> people actually came alongside me. And when I felt God answer my question, Mark, you, you're not stuck, you just stop moving. There was a second part to that. 
God said, in fact, you're not stuck. You're stationary. You see, when you're stuck, usually you're stuck because something has happened that, that, that you didn't cause. It was an unexpected death of a family member, and you're stuck in a position that you weren't prepared for. It was somebody walking out of the relationship unexpectedly, and you're stuck with stuff that you weren't prepared for. It was a loss of a job that you weren't expecting, and now you're stuck with something that you weren't prepared for. But when you're stationary, you're actually holding on to something and not letting it go. You're still holding on to the disappointment. You're still holding on to the offense instead of letting it go. You're not stuck, you're just not moving. You're like my daughter, Augie. You're on the bike and you feel like there's something should be happening, but there's some effort that you have to put in. Folks, it's time to move. So I'm going to tell you my testimony. I decided to join the day team. Like I said, I joined production and got to meet some people there. And, and then I was like, God's calling me back to the keyboard. I just can't let it go. So I love worship so much. So I got to join our worship team and it started working out there. And let me tell you, folks, people kept looking at me and saying, Mark, there's more to what you've got going on, bro. Who are you? Like, what are you doing? There's more to you. I'm trying to hide on the wall and they're calling me out. And I'm like, okay, so yeah, I took another step. So I decided to join a J group. So my wife and I, we um, joined a marriage J group and we loved it. We, wanted, we didn't know what to expect. But when I tell you that it put so much life back into us, just hearing other couples struggle with the same stuff that we were struggling with, like how do you deal with your in-laws? And mom and dad, Hockey Day, if you're watching, I love you, you guys are the best. I have great in-laws, I love you guys so much. <laughs> That is not my issue. <laughs> but how do, you, how do you struggle with those issues that come when you join families together? It's not an easy thing to do. And then I took another step, and I actually registered to be part of the evening program, which is our leadership intensive. And I did that. And let me tell you, it has strengthened the way I work in my vocation. It strengthened me as a father as a husband and leading my family. And it's actually strengthening me in, in ministry. Y'all got me up here on a weekend preaching. What is going on right now? <laughs> but then I took another step. People saw potential in me. They were gathered beside me and it's like, hey, I see you against the wall. But why don't you lead a J group? I didn't know what to expect, but I did. And let me tell you guys, I wasn't expecting to get blessed the way I was blessed to take 20 plus years of ministry and pour it into somebody else, to watch them grow from it, to watch them lead even better, to watch them go further than I ever did. It was so rewarding to me to be able to pour into others what God has poured into me. In fact, maybe you're like me and you may have a talent or a gift, but you quietly quit. Let me tell you, if you still have breath in your body, you still have purpose. God has something still for you to do. Maybe you are a retired CEO. Maybe you are a retired successful business owner, but your purpose has not retired. Imagine what would happen if you come alongside of our young people and our students, our young adults, and, and let me pour some things about life into you that God poured into me. What made me successful? What made my business successful? What made my marriage successful? And let me pour that into you and watch them take all those things that God gave you and push people further than you've ever been. Folks, it's time to move. It's time. So when, Moses was told, when God told Moses to keep moving, this is also what he said. He said, and I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops, his chariots and his charioteers. When my glory is displayed through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. You see, Moses trusted God and was obedient. And he was looking at this huge sea in front of him. 
he was looking at this huge sea of fear in front of him. He was looking at this huge sea of uncertainty in front of him. But he trusted God, that God would get him to the other side. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Did y'all catch that? Moses walked through the problem. He didn't walk alone. He had all those Hebrews beside him and behind him. When God asks you to take another step, number one, it's not just about you. It's about glorifying God. When you take a step of faith and you obey what God is asking for you to do, people are watching you and they get to see the glory of God working through you. You get to see people who are following behind you see the glory of God working in your life, moving through you. You may be wondering, Mark, why do I need all these people, bro? If you're an introvert like me, I get it. Peopling can be very difficult. In the New Testament, the Bible actually says it like this. It says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promises. I'm so glad we serve a God who keeps his promises. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do. Encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You see, because we are a part of a body of believers, we have people to constantly remind us the promises of God. You know, when you're kind of having one of them weeks and he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. When you're part of a body of people, they come alongside you and like, hey, I know this was a tough week, but don't forget what God promised you. He already told you he's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. Get up. Come on. Let's go. You can do this. They're very quick to remind you, no, you're not going to stay here in this temporary location. Get up. It's time to move. We are not meant to move alone. Rather, we are meant to move in community. We get to show one another love and to our communities. And when we commit to gathering together like you are today online in Hokesson, here in Newark, you get to encourage one another. Stay faithful to God. Stay faithful to the things of God. And in closing, you may feel stuck like my daughter, Augie, did. Just frustrated. But when you put your faith in Jesus, you guys, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can take a step forward. And maybe God already told you what your next step should be. Your next step may be committing to gathering more consistently with your family. It's time to move. Or maybe you should be leading a J group, pouring into others. Fall semester kicks off really, really soon. Go register. Take that step of faith and watch God use you and answer questions that you never had the answers to. It's time to move. You know that neighbor and that coworker that you've been meaning to invite to church? Let's go. It's time to move. Or maybe you're still not sure how you feel about Jesus, this church stuff, faith. Why don't you commit to just coming back? We have a new series starting next week. Why don't you come kick the tires a little bit? You owe it to yourself. 
let's move. You may find yourself like I was, looking for your next. And if I'm being transparent, there's still some areas in my life that I still am. And if that's you today, can I pray for you? With every eye closed, let's focus on Jesus for a while. Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for choosing us and using us and bearing with us. But God, I, I, we feel this calling to more, that there's more that you want us to walk into, that there's more that you want us to do with our lives, there's more. And God, we're open to take that next step with you. Will you lead us? We will follow you. Will you go before us? We will follow you. And as we're still focused on God, maybe you're still on the fence about giving your life to Jesus. You've been coming for a while and you just not made the step yet. You know, today could really be your day that you give your life to Jesus today. You can take that step today. And I'm not trying to pressure anybody. This is a life-changing decision. Today could be your day. And if that's you, and you're ready to take that next step, I wanna pray with you. You can either use my words, or you can use your own. Hey God, it's me. I'm imperfect, I've done some things that I'm ashamed of, some things that haven't got all together yet, God, but today I choose to take your grace. God, I accept your mercy today. Thank you for not making me be good to get you, but I get to have you to be better. God, I believe you died for my sins. You took care of that already. And I believe you rose again with all power and victory. And God, I'm asking you today to be leader and Lord in my life. I give you my heart today, God. I choose to accept you as my Savior. In Jesus' name. And if that was you, can you type faith in the comments if you're watching online? Oh, Keston, Newark, would you raise your hand if that was you that gave your life to Jesus for the first time today? It's so awesome. And Journey family everywhere, can you put your hands together and let's celebrate those who gave their life to Jesus.